Is it worth the cost to pay more for 320 resolution versus 160 resolution? Is an 18 Odin LT any good for helmet mounting? Hi, I'm Tina from Target Tamers, and today I'm reviewing the ATN Odin LT320 2 to 4 times thermal monocular to answer these questions and more. We heard about the newly released line of Odin LT thermal monoculars, and I was curious about it since it costs about twice as much as 160 alternatives and it lacks extra features like standby mode and internal video recording. To satisfy my curiosities, ATN were kind enough to send out a loaner for us to field test. I have to admit, on paper, it wasn't looking so good, and I remained skeptical right up to box opening. But first things first, here are the specs. The 18 Odin LT320 has thermal resolution of 320 by 240, a 12 micron pixel sensor and a refresh rate of 60 hertz. Has eye relief of 25 millimeters and color palette modes of white hot and black hot. It takes a 1CR123A battery to operate for two and a half hours. Build quality, its dimensions are 5.16 by 2.8 by 1.81 inches in size and it weighs 10 ounces. So it's very lightweight and compact, a non-issue to take with you on all your outdoor excursions. Now ATN only lists a weather resistant IP rating so it can handle light rain, but I wouldn't recommend it for submersion. Now both the battery compartment cap and the extended battery pack have an O-ring seal for some water resistant benefits. And the multi-piece body seems very tight and dust proof. Now there is no rubber armor over the exterior of the body, which I'm guessing is made up out of a polycarbonate composite because it's not unlike similar plastic constructed optics. I recommend treating it with care as it's only minimally resistant to superficial scratches. Now what comes in the box? It comes with a CR123A battery, an eye cup on the monocular, a user manual, lens cloth, a zippered storage case, and a very nice soft carry case. Now I really like it. It's got three big compartments and then an elastic band with various sized uh, accessory compartments. On the back you have plastic D-rings and then a buckle strap. Now not included as a standard accessory, it must be purchased separately, is the extended life battery pack. It doubles the life of the runtime of the Odin LT and I'm glad they threw it in for me to field test with because after just a couple hours out in the field, I needed it. So this leads me to address the drawbacks and limitations first. Battery life. Now the battery life is a legitimate concern because it only has a runtime of two and a half hours with non-rechargeable CR123A batteries. It's about pretty accurate so that's not a very long time out in the field. Now the extended life battery pack that was included for me to field test with is a separate optional accessory. I do recommend considering it when you purchase the Odin LT. Now it does not come with a charging cable so you will have to supply that on your own. It takes a USB type C charging cable. It provides five hours of runtime so with the battery pack and a battery in the monocular, I had plenty of time for observation in one night. Now it takes six hours to charge and I did not see any indicator lights. I confirmed that it was up to full charge by putting it into the monocular and turning on the display. The lack of additional smart features. Now the Odin LT is designed to be a fast and easy to use thermal monocular and I feel it fulfills that with its streamlined and straightforward design. Given that it's supposed to lack the extra bells and whistles, you will miss out on having a color fusion mode, hot tracking mode, distance mode, standby mode, and internal video recording, image capture, and it does not have Wi-Fi or Bluetooth connectivity for use with an app for remote control use. Now with the limitations out of the way, let's move on to the middle ground with what I call a so-so feature that is beneficial, but it can't necessarily be maximized um, to its full potential. And what I mean by this is that it can be helmet mounted, head mounted, but because the Odin has uh, two times minimum magnification, it does have some inherent drawbacks. Head and helmet mounting. So the Odin LT has an integrated dovetail rail ATN has the mounting systems for helmets and a mounting system and headset uh, that works perfectly with the Odin LT. Unfortunately, I didn't think to ask for one in the box of field test with, and I wasn't about to buy one since I'm not keeping it. An affordable alternative that I used was a JDAPT plate. Mine slides on perfectly, and then I secured it and got to mounting it. It took a little bit of configuring to align it with my eye due to the up-down adjustment room of the J-arm, but I made it work. I had some counterweights on the back of my helmet, and as you can see, I forgot to strap it on because it was well balanced. Now moving with the Odin LT for hands-free use while it was mounted was difficult. It's not impossible, but with two times magnification, I did lose my balance and it was difficult to navigate naturally. It's really designed for stationary observation. So, you know, flip it down, look through it, flip it back up, move from point A to point B, stop, and then flip it back down and observe again. It's your prerogative how you want to use it, but I would recommend using it as it's recommended as a stationary observation tool. So yes, it can be head and helmet mounted 
wanted, but there are limitations to maximizing its full potentials as a hands-free uh, helmet mounted device. Now tripod mounting it was awesome as you can get a very steady platform, especially helpful for long range observation. I rigged the tripod mounting setup with the JDAP plate, out of the box thinking, right? Now I want to address the awesome. Now resolution, the Odin has ATN Subsidian LT Core Thermal Sensor. In this model, you're getting a 12 micron sensor, 320 by 240 resolution that refreshes at a rate of 60 Hertz. Now the 12 micron sensor works well with the smaller 19 millimeter lens and I never did have any lag issues as is expected since I was stationary while using it and I was only doing amateur scanning. I was extremely impressed with the amount of contrast and detail I was getting from the Odin LT. It really did seem like night was day looking through the thermal monocular and there's a lot more detail and resolution that you can get on the terrain with 320 versus 160. I do have to say that while what I was seeing through the Odin LT was excellent and fantastic, my digiscoping does not do a good job at showcasing the thermal monocular's actual performance. It does not do it justice. Now the pictures I did get uh, were very very poor. I took off the eye cup, I used my phone camera while the Odin was mounted to a tripod, I even tried to use my photography camera and manipulate ISO, contrast, exposure, all of those settings to no avail. So it'd be nice in judging the resolution of the Odin LT because my digiscoping is not a reflection of its actual performance. I spent time with the Odin LT during daylight hours and throughout the night. Um, I've been able to catch javelina, coyotes, rabbits, and squirrels. I swear there were squirrels at night. Uh, though excellent for spotting wildlife, I was also very impressed that I could clearly detect vehicles with ease from like 400 to 1,000 yards away. Even though I spent some time in town, I'm still in the country and plazas were lit up to show building windows and parked vehicles at beyond 1,100 yards. In lit up parking lots, I could people watch and was impressed with the amount of detail I could see. That cat threw me when it went down a storm drain. For human detection yardages, I was able to spot humans at 689 yards, which is longer than what ATN advertises. But even then it was tripod mounted and I was only able to barely detect them because I knew they were there and there was a lot of contrast between them and what was behind them. Now at 550 yards, I could spot them again, as long as they were moving. It was still in the, I know something is out there realm. I'm just not sure what it is. At 400 yards, I could positively identify, oh yeah, that's a human. Now recognizing them was somewhere in the 300 yard range. It was even better at 200 yards. I could observe and tell what they were doing. And then even closer between 50 to 100 yards, you can see different details like hair length, even different layers of clothing. It just gets better from, from there on in. When all is said and done, I'm extremely impressed with the resolution and the performance of the Odin LT. My initial reservations about value and cost for a monocular thermal monocular that really only has a resolution as its primary highlight feature, they all disappeared. So for quality and resolution performance alone, it's definitely worth the upgrade in cost to move from 160 up to 320. Ease of use. So I credit the ease of use of the Odin LT to its basic functionality, void of those extra add-ons that can interfere with the user interface experience. I mean, it has four button operation, a very fast startup time of like two to three seconds, and it's lightweight, enough to hold in the hand without worry of fatigue. Now quick presses of the three buttons will allow you to manipulate magnification, nuke, non-uniformity correction, and the color palette. Now it has white hot and black hot color palettes and two and four times magnification. Extremely simple. Now the onboard nuke button is a setup for manual calibration, which I like because that way I can control it when I feel I want it. And a long press of it will put you into automatic nuking. Now a long press of the magnification button will take you into pixel correction, procedure mode and a long press of the palette button will take you into contrast sensitivity and brightness settings 
it's really a set it and forget it monocular and speaking of that it does have a diopter a knob to be able to sharpen the display for your vision uh, to correct for some minor vision problems that you might have now the only two features that I really consistently use while out in the field was the focus knob and the nuke button which I use freely everything else was not essential as long as I could see and see clearly is it Target Tamers approved? With little else to scrutinize on the at and Odin LT320, you can see that it's a barebone thermal monocular. It doesn't need the extra bells and whistles, the added features to inflate its value. It's a solid thermal device with repeatable and dependable performance and is why it's Target Tamers approved. The type of resolution and detection distances that I was getting on humans with the Odin LT320 is unachievable with 160 alternatives in my experience. With that said, I can honestly recommend the at and Odin LT320 two to four times thermal monocular for all outdoor recreational activities. If you're after hands-free use, it's not the best for mobility, but it will work for, say, if you're in a tree stand, uh, blind, or if you're lying prone in the grass while coyote or hog hunting, it will service the need. For patrol and duty use, it has value as a fast and easy to use thermal monocular. Best for scanning, you can see in which direction your suspect is fleeing or use it to observe human activity from a distance. You can be the judge of how you will use the Odin LT, but it does have the quality to reach out to mid-range distances with quality detection and resolution performance. Now, I wrote a lot in the written review, so be sure to check that out. It'll be in a link in the description below. Thanks for tuning in, and as always, like, subscribe, and get outside.